Hi, this is Dave McCrory, and we're going to go through the Rails Conference workshop and show you how to use some of the great services provided by Cloud Foundry. The first thing we're going to do is go to the workshop itself, which the shortcut is through bit.ly at bit.ly cf underscore labs and that will take you to the support.cloudfoundry site which is the Cloud Foundry community and we'll go ahead and walk through some of the basics the first thing is to make sure that you have an account on cloudfoundry.com so if you don't you'll have to go here and sign up and once you get approved uh, you'll be ready to start the workshop Next, make sure that you have uh, Ruby and Ruby Gems installed. We have several places where you can get the details on doing that. We also recommend using RVM, uh, which you'll see the website here for, along with if you're running a Mac that you have the latest Xcode as well because you will need it to, uh, uh, to run the tutorials properly uh, to have all the latest Ruby information first thing you'll need to do once you've done the prerequisites is install VMC and I prefer doing sudo gem install VMC and you'll see some things on the screen um, these are uh, warnings based on doing the latest uh, Ruby gems update you have to put in your password these are simply informational warnings, uh, they're not errors. This is the end result, which is you can see that it's successfully installed the gem. Next, you'll want to use the gem and target api.cloudfoundry.com. You'll see we've successfully targeted Cloud Foundry. Now we're going to log in. This is where you would use the credentials that you received in the email after signing up. I have my credentials, so I will enter them in. You'll also put in either your temporary or permanent password, depending. You'll see we've successfully logged in. And if you have a temporary password, you can go and change it by typing VMC PSSWD and it will ask you for your old password along with your new password. Next you'll want to install Bundler. So you do sudo gem install bundler. And you'll see we have Bundler installed now. We're going to create a simple application. The first thing we're going to do is make a directory. I've actually made one. So if you look, I have a code workshop directory. We will also need to make another directory called views. So uh, we'll do that in a moment. First, we're going to create a gem file. Uh, so I have a text editor open here. This is TextMate. And you can use whatever you like. We're going to copy and paste the gem file information here and save as gem file with no extension. Now we have our gem file. Now we're going to create another file and that is going to be named Cinetwitter RB. So we'll go ahead and grab the content of that and place it in here. You can see it has some requirements on some gems. We have some helpers for Sinatra. We have a root path or route, and we have a follows route. And we also have two ERB, file, ERB files that we'll need to create and that we'll depend on. So we're going to save this file as cinetwitter.rb. And now we're going to go down and create our index ERB file. So one of the two files that we're dependent on. To do that, though, we're going to have to go back and create a views directory. So we'll go here, make 
the views directory. So here's our gem file, here's the CineTwitter RB file, and here is our views directory. We will create the new file, which is index.erb. Copy the code, save the file, index.erb. Oops, we need to actually save it in the views directory. We'll actually go up here and we'll remove the index.erb. So we have our gem files, Cine Twitter, and index ERB living in the views directory. And there it is. Next we'll create the follows ERB. So we'll create another new file. Copy and paste and save as we're in the views directory this time. Follows.erb. Now we have the follows. So we have all of our files. We're going to bundle the package. So we'll do bundle package. Again, no worries about the warning messages. You will. Uh, You'll be more concerned about what you see at the bottom right now. You see it's fetching the source index. It's going to grab the gems, bundle them all together, and we should get a complete bundle in just a minute. And there we have it. Our bundle is complete. The next thing we want to do is we want to push this up onto Cloud Foundry. So we'll do VMC push, and we're going to call this screencast rails and yes we want to deploy the current directory we're going to take all of the defaults and our application started so now we can actually give it a try so we'll do rails screencast rails and here, we can now type in, say, does McCrory follow <clears throat> Cloud Foundry? And you'll see that we've gone and queried the Twitter API. We have McCrory does follow Cloud Foundry. And so now we'll go back. So now we've gone all the way through. We have gone to our app name. We've seen that it works. We have the staging application and starting application OK, which matches up. And now we're going to use Redis to create a ranking um, of top users. So to do this, the first thing we need to do is go back to the gem file. And we need to add the Redis and JSON gems. Save that. Then we have to go to our Cine Twitter RB file. We have to add the require Redis and JSON gems. And then we will go a bit further down, and you'll see that we need to add these lines. Uh, you may be wondering about this. This is where we actually get the details of the Redis service that we've been assigned, get the credentials, and then attach to the Redis service. And this is done through a JSON formatted document that is passed through an environment variable. So we're going to copy this. We're going to insert it here. And then we're going to add a few lines in our helper section. So you'll see we have the uh, update leaderboard and get leaders. So we're going to take those and we're going to insert those here. We're 
actually going to go ahead and adjust this over like this. So that these spaces are the same. And that one. Okay. Now we also have to add two other lines. One is around the root or base path here. And the other is to update the leaderboard information, which is under follows. Like that. We're going to save this. So now we need to go to the index ERB file and add the leaderboard. We will add that here and save. And now we will rebundle our package. So we'll run bundle package again. Our package has been bundled. We're going to stop our existing application, so it's VMC stop, and in our case, it's screencast rails. We've stopped our app. Now we're going to update it. So we're going to do VMC update. And you'll see that we've updated it. And now we're going to create the Redis service that we actually want to use. So that's using VMC create dash service space redis dash dash bind so we're actually going to bind it to the screencast rails application you'll see that it's created the service so here's the service creation and it is bounded to our application now that the service is up and running and is bound to our application we can simply issue a vmc start screencast rails and we now have our application started and we can give it a try. So we'll go over here and refresh. You'll see we have a top 10 users now and if we do McCrory follows Cloud Foundry, we do go. You'll see that we have our response and when we go back to the query page we now have a top 10 users with McCrory and Cloud Foundry listed. The other thing that we can do now that we have our service up and running is we can go and make a few slight changes. Uh, the first one will be um, we're going to go into our index ERB file we're going to actually change this line. So if you notice this line matches up over here and slightly well it's very similar to this line. So we're going to update that, save it, and then we're going to do VMC update. Screencast rails. Like so you'll see that we've actually updated our app. And if we go here and we refresh, you'll see that the line changed to now I also scale. So, let's go ahead and scale it. To scale, we do VMC instances, the app name, and the number of instances. Go here. If you watch the numbers down here now that we've scaled, you'll see that they change, and that's because we're being load balanced across all of the different instances we've created. And we can also scale them down by changing the number of instances to two, and we can go back here and refresh. If you refresh enough times, you'll see that it flip-flops between the two instances we have.